As the climate rapidly changed, only the hardy could survive. It's possible that those animals capable of traveling great distances between diminishing water supplies had a better chance of survival. There is a group of megafauna who could do just that. Today's kangaroos are the great survivors. Comparative anatomist Natalie Warburton studies living animals to learn more about their extinct relatives. But one of the biggest of all of the extinct kangaroos was Procoptodon goliath. Standing over two metres tall and weighing up to 240 kilograms, this was an enormous beast moving through the Australian landscape. A pair of Procoptodon feast before the heat of the day. Unlike today's kangaroos who feed on grass, they prefer bushes and leaves. Their distinctive short face gives the jaw more strength to chew the tougher plants. Procoptodon was the largest of the extinct short-faced marsupials known as stenurine kangaroos. But could this giant do what its modern-day relative takes for granted? Hop. So hopping at high speeds is actually really efficient. These really long tendons and muscles in the leg stretch like elastic bands and then recoil that helps to transmit some of that stored elastic energy into the hopping. So what about a 240 kilogram procoptodon? Were they able to hop or were they doing something different? And was that the difference between life and death? All that force has got to pass through the tendon. And we think this might be one of the limitations to the maximum body size or the maximum speed that these kangaroos are capable of moving at. Yeah, like cleaning up that crest and then it looks... Yeah. Or start to see expose. all the individual muscles, yeah. Would a tendon like this be strong enough to support a hopping goliath? Here you can feel it's quite tough. It's basically this rubber band. You know, they really have this unique tendinous structure. Oh yeah, there we go. Once the tendon is removed, it's secured in a specialised engineering rig where it will be stretched to the point of failure. Can you feel it? Is it taut? Yeah, it's yeah. very taut. Okay. We're going to do our failure test. So we're going to pull it up all the way until it breaks. All right, and starting? Starting. That's four, now five, we go. six. And now it's go. going, now it's going. 300 newtons, 500 newtons. That's insane. 700 newtons, 800, 800 newtons. newtons. Oh, and now it burst. You can see it at the top here, it slipped. So at 880 newtons. There, it's about to go at the very top. It's sliding out. The Eastern Grey's tendon withstood an immense 880 newtons until it failed. That's the equivalent of more than 80 kilograms of force. The force that this tendon can withstand was about four times the body weight of this kangaroo in just one tendon of one leg. We were able to get huge forces out of these tendons. And that's a little bit surprising. So we think these tendons are actually able to withstand higher forces than we thought. I'm just going through today's simulation. The team have used their knowledge of the Eastern Grey's anatomy to build a computer model. So you've got the 50 kilogram model hopping at multiple speeds, is that right? I have. This model can be scaled up to test if kangaroos can become too big to hop. OK, so what happens when we get to 250 kilos? This is about the mass of a procoptodon. Could it hop? And see how the ankles touch the ground? Right, and what speeds is it capable of hopping at now? Just one. <laughs> it can only hop at 2.6 metres per second. So it's now highly constrained yes. in, in the speeds that it can hop at. 
Hopping at one speed is hardly a practical way of getting around. So if hopping's off the table, how did Procopteron move? Deep in the vaults at the Melbourne Museum are some of the best preserved Procopteron fossils on the planet. This short-faced kangaroo lived at the same time as Procopteron. It's a close relative, so can provide the best evidence as to how Procopteron might have moved around. In terms of the shape, it's so different. You can run through the entire skeleton of a short-faced kangaroo to find features pointing towards striding. The joint surface is just so much bigger and big joint surfaces mean spreading of load mm. to reduce the stress. That's something a, a hopping kangaroo just doesn't have to worry about. They're exceptionally adapted for supporting their weight on one leg or another, rather than spreading their body mass across both feet at once. One of the strongest signs a short-faced kangaroo didn't hop was the length of its tail. In living kangaroos, their long tails act as a counterbalance when they take off. This means their body doesn't tip forward or sideways. These bones paint a picture of a very different kangaroo one with a short tail that walked upright like a T-Rex rather than hopping like a contemporary kangaroo. Could this difference in locomotion have played a part in its extinction? In terms of climate, unpredictability has become an advantage in some ways for living kangaroos because they can move such vast distances in a short amount of time with their incredibly efficient hopping locomotion. That's a response that just wouldn't have been available to Procopteron. Once those distances are too great for this animal to move, well then it's kind of stuck and therefore at more risk to local spontaneous events like the decline in regular seasonal water or disease. The ultimate proof to whether these prehistoric kangaroos strode may lie in the sands of Lake Calabona in South Australia. This is pretty bloody good. <laughs> Completely unexpected. Aaron Caymans has discovered exciting new evidence. I think that's about it. These footprints could change scientific theory into fact. Yep, I think that's what we've got. Excellent. We have just stumbled across this trackway. If we have a look, we can see that there are short oval prints. They're fairly wide set and the animal is taking fairly short strides. So this is nothing like we would expect to see if we were looking at an emu. Their trackways are much narrower and the shape of this foot doesn't really fit with anything except one of our extinct short-faced kangaroos. So this is the first time I have come across a trackway like this that potentially does demonstrate we've got a striding kangaroo. Now, as someone who works on fossil footprints, this is a pretty exciting moment. One of the great things about trace fossils is that they're an actual record of behavior. And so if an animal is moving in a specific way in a trackway, it's not a theory anymore. We've got actual evidence that that's how that animal moved. To learn that there are preserved striding trackways of short-faced kangaroos in the Lake Eyre Basin in South Australia, that's incredible. This is the, the smoking gun that proves these giant kangaroos weren't hoppers, they were striders. People wait lifetimes to see evidence like this. We see proof with our own eyes because we can walk in their footsteps. So what could have made the environmental changes 40 to 50,000 years ago so different 
that many species were wiped off the face of the earth. 